that sweet huntsman from above first wounded me and left me prone. Into the very arms of love my stricken soul forthwith was thrown. The dart wherewith he wounded me was all embarbed round with love. And thus my spirit came to be one with its maker, God above. The Baroque, the age and its art. Dynamic. Dramatic. Splendid. Sensuous. Turbulent. Tempestuous. The 16th century nurtured a period of great conflicts and confusions, religious, political, and intellectual. The ship of the church was storm-tossed on a sea of controversy. Luther and the Protestant Reformation set Europe ablaze. Men set the torch to one another with religious passion. The Catholic Counter-Reformation brought with it the dread Inquisition and a great outburst of religious art. The French armies of Francis I swept into the Italy of the Renaissance. And Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, in his running feud with the popes, sacked Rome in 1527. His troops set fire to the city, one of the greatest monuments of Christendom. The discoveries of unknown continents and their resources during the early 16th century led to fierce competition for political power and economic riches, or empire, in the late 16th and 17th centuries. In France and Germany, one civil war followed another until those two countries were splintered into numerous hostile factions. As if these religious and political upheavals weren't enough for Europe, Western man's intellectual attitudes were also challenged and upset. Renaissance man had believed the earth to be the center of the universe. But Copernicus, in 1543, published a book setting man's globe on a whirling path around the sun. In the 15th century, Renaissance man had discovered an orderly world. His art reflects this. Renaissance painters used architectural backgrounds. 
to create a feeling of geometric clarity and order. A Renaissance poet said, God has formed the world in a goodly pattern. In contrast, the men of the 16th century saw their world in violent motion. Baroque art expresses this feeling for the dynamic and the dramatic. The poet John Donne, commenting on the spirit of the Baroque era, wrote, And new philosophy calls all in doubt. Tis all in pieces. All coherence gone. Clarity gave way to mystery and vagueness. The deep shadows in Baroque paintings reflect a new awareness of the unknown, the mysterious. This use of dramatic contrasts of light and shadow is called chiaroscuro. We can see it in the following examples. In this study of a philosopher, the painter Rembrandt achieves a theatrical effect by placing his figure in the window-lighted corner of a dark room. Michelangelo Buonarroti dominated the arts of the 16th century. He stood with one foot in the Renaissance, and the other in the Baroque. His early works were filled with subjects from classical Greek and Roman mythology, or like this early Pietà, were composed in an orderly, balanced form, like a triangle. But Michelangelo's later works incorporate a new vision of the world, twisting, falling forms. And rough, exciting surfaces. Michelangelo's early Pietà is on the left. A later carving of the same subject is on the right. Here is a detail from the early work. This one is from the later Baroque example. Let us make a more extreme comparison. On the left is Michelangelo's David typical of the High Renaissance. On the right is the same subject, David, by the Baroque sculptor Bernini. But look at the difference. Bernini's David unleashes anger and violence. Ben Jonson, a 17th century dramatist, said, that which is tortured is counted the more exquisite. Nothing is fashionable till it is deformed. Michelangelo carefully arranged 
the Sistine ceiling into a geometry of frames. Squares and triangles punctuated by prophets and classical figures. It is in the spirit of the Renaissance. However, when he completed The Last Judgment 30 years later, Michelangelo had filled the wall with a vast and terrible panorama. Everywhere we see bewilderment, chaos, despair. The city of Michelangelo's triumphs was the birthplace of the Baroque. Painters, sculptors, and architects from all over the world flocked there to study the monuments of the city and to make their own special contributions to the sacred beauty of Rome. There was Bernini, the sculptor, and Borromini, the disturbed and imaginative architect. Caravaggio came from northern Italy. And Peter Paul Rubens journeyed from Flanders. There was Nicolas Poussin, a Frenchman. And El Greco, the Greek, on his way to Spain. The works of these artists made Rome into an inspiring and magnificent center for the new Catholic Church embarked on its campaign of counter-reformation. And its art. The Catholic Church turned to art, Baroque art, as propaganda to counter the Reformation, to bring back its confused children. It appealed to the emotions and made its believers feel the power of God. The painting called Christ Driving the Money Changers from the Temple shows an angry, militant Christ driving out the corruption from his church. The message of the painting was not lost on 16th century Catholics. The mother church, St. Peter's in Rome, was Michelangelo's greatest triumph. The church was built during the High Renaissance according to Michelangelo's plans and was extended during the 16th century. It was completed with the embracing arms of the great colonnade by Bernini. Inside St. Peter's, the twisting spiral columns of the canopy, called a baldacchino, loom over the altar. The harmonious grandeur of the Mother Church 
was to have its influence throughout Europe. New churches were built everywhere with exciting, rippling facades. Brilliantly decorated interiors like stage sets. dazzling domes. Ceiling painters created breathtaking illusions of the church roof blasted away to reveal miraculous views of paradise. The Counter-Reformation painters of the Baroque aimed at the emotions, not the intellect. The eyes of their saints are filled with mystical visions and religious ecstasy. From their brushes flowed heart-rending images of martyrdom and suffering. How calm and reasonable is this Renaissance crucifixion when compared with these by artists of the Baroque era. style had blossomed in the Rome of Michelangelo. From there it spread to Venice, queen of the Adriatic Sea. Let us visit 16th century Venice, a colorful and exciting city. Floating on a sparkling sea, its streets a shimmer of canals. Tintoretto, who painted this Annunciation, and the other Venetian painters of the 16th century, break with the order and precision of the Renaissance. Venetian painting in the 16th century is alive with rich brushwork and textures of paint. Let us make some comparisons. 
This Madonna by the Venetian painter Giorgione is in the Renaissance style. Like Michelangelo's early Pietà, its composition is based on a balanced triangle. A later work by Giorgione has two figures mysteriously set back into a dark and stormy landscape. The subject of the painting is unclear. Renaissance paintings, on the other hand, always had clear and meaningful subjects. But for the later Giorgione, the mysterious and dramatic landscape is enough. In Titian's presentation of the Virgin Mary at the temple, the subject is in the foreground and moves from left to right, parallel to the picture plane. A generation later, Tintoretto painted the same subject, the presentation, in a circular, swirling composition. Where is the principal subject, the young virgin? She is not in the spotlighted foreground, but halfway up the winding stairs, a dramatic device which builds anticipation and creates tension in the viewer. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci is balanced and symmetrical. Although the painting is nearly ruined today, one can still see that all lines converge and focus on the head of Christ. The composition is typical of the High Renaissance. Tintoretto of Venice also painted a Last Supper, but now the sweeping diagonal lines lend an air of excitement. The scene is dark, while a theatrical luminescence spotlights the apostles and a radiant Christ. The painting is in the new 16th century spirit. The artistic creations of Venice and Rome dazzled the world. The Baroque style spread to counter-Reformation Spain. And northward in the 17th century to the aristocratic court at Versailles. and to the prosperous bourgeois Netherlands, where patrons of the arts were Protestants and seafarers. its art. The Baroque in Spain. The Spanish kings saw themselves as defenders of the new church, militant and triumphant over the reformers. King Philip II had floated the mightiest of fleets, the Armada, hoping to conquer the Protestant protectress Elizabeth I of England. The palace of the kings, the Escorial, was their home but it was also a church and monastery. And a symbol of the power and glory of Spain. The life of the Spanish court is revealed to us by its official painter, Diego Velazquez. Maids of Honor, Velazquez manipulates light and shadow, revealing in this way 
a variety of textures and surfaces. The mystic zeal of Spanish Catholicism inspired paintings of dying saints and of saints experiencing visions. This religious passion characterizes El Greco's figures, who seem to be aflame with religious ecstasy. A new religious order, the Society of Jesus, was enthusiastically supported by the Spanish kings. The Jesuits were dedicated teachers and answered the church's need for committed men of action. Spain and her kings were loyal disciples of the church. In Spain, the Catholic reforms had their proving ground for the benefit of all 16th century Catholics. The Baroque in Holland. The religious upheavals of the 16th century triggered the political and social upheavals of the 17th century. The Protestant Dutch threw off the yoke of the Spanish Catholic king. The Dutch were proud of their hard-won freedom and of their tiny, flat country. They delighted in its rich land its surrounding ocean and its vast skies. The Dutch became merchants and shipbuilders to the world and amassed fortunes through hard work and thrift. These new international businessmen wanted paintings to adorn their homes. They ordered paintings of themselves and families. In sunny rooms, busy at household chores. They were proud of their tables, laden with food. with elaborate arrangements of flowers. The Baroque in France. In France, the new king, Louis XIV, had his own answer to the political chaos which had plagued his country. He devised a plan to glorify his person and his position, thus gathering all the power in France to himself. His schemes for power included the building of a vast palace at Versailles with acres of carefully planned gardens. Louis developed a ritual revolving around his personal life. He exaggerated the importance of his every act, thus drawing the attention of the French nobles away from the fact that he was usurping all their power. Versailles and Paris became new centers of artistic life. The grand palaces of France, with their enormous rooms and sumptuous furniture, their miles of garden walks and elaborate fountains, provided a glorious setting for the new monarch and his court. What then 
are the elements of the Baroque style. It is not an art of lines and edges, like Renaissance art, but an art of color, light, and shadow. The subject is not parallel to the picture plane and in the center foreground, as in this Renaissance flight into Egypt, but is tucked away in one corner, like this Baroque flight into Egypt. space thrusts out one side and recedes deeply into the other. Mystery and drama set the mood. This Renaissance portrait seems dignified and serene when compared to this gay action-filled portrait by a Baroque painter. The setting is a tavern where a man and his sweetheart are laughing at a joke. The light catches the flush of their faces and creates a feeling of movement. Baroque art is an art of motion, not repose. restless imbalances. Of violence and spectacle. Baroque art is sensuous and sensual. Baroque art is aristocratic, but it is also the art of the common man. It is the art of the Catholic Church and of the new Protestant churches. While the Renaissance restored an emphasis on the physical world, it was the 16th century which saw the full flowering of the arts of the senses. Baroque art reflects the love of feasts music. And the enjoyment of the pleasures of the flesh. At the height of the Baroque, the philosopher Leibniz described the services of the Catholic Church and captured thereby the entire spirit of the Baroque. The sweet concord of voices, the blaze of lights, the fragrant perfumes, 
the rich vestments, the sacred vessels, adorned with precious stones, the statues and pictures which awaken holy thoughts, the glorious creations of architectural genius with their effects of height and distance, the music of the bells. Thank you.